Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the next segment. Um, so we just defined our loads and our support tools. And uh, so now we wanna go up to the very top. Remember, we have to scale our loads because right now they're currently scaled at zero. So how do, how do you do that again? You go to edit, load status, and where it says gravitational factor is zero, zero. We don't wanna account for loads right now. Um, I'll give you just a debriefing of what those are. So gravitational factors means that there's gonna be some self weight. So if we have an X or a Y, usually Y means gravitational factors X. Um, we normally don't deal with X, especially in the beginner tutorials, but uh, we will do some, we will look at some Y gravitational factors. So that's gonna be the self weight of the beam. Um, for now, let's keep it at zero and zero, and we'll scale it to a load factor of one. Now click update and okay. So now my loads that I've just put on joint number three have been scaled to a factor of one. And that's all we want. If we wanted to do different load cases, we can scale them to different factors if both of them are going to be going up by the same factor. But we'll talk about that stuff later. So for now, load factor, <coughs> load factor of one, negative 100 kilonewtons in the y force, and we got 50 kilonewtons in the x force. And everything looks like it is good to go. We've defined our supports. We've scaled our loads. We've got our members selected as trusses, and. Um, our sections properties were good and our material properties were good. So now let's run the software, the analysis. Okay, see we got one load case, which is good. And we got no FYIs, no warnings, no errors. All good, press enter. Now for the moment of truth, we need to see if our results matched up to those of our YouTube video example. So click on the numerical modeling toolbar and now we're gonna get some different options here. Um, and let's go to the joint displacement spreadsheet and look at our joint displacement. So we know that no joints are going to displace other than our third joint because that was the one without any supports. So we went 3.445 millimeters in the X direction and negative 1.3245 millimeters in the Y direction downwards, which makes sense because we're pushing right and we're pushing down. So those are all good. That makes sense. Now let's check our results to the YouTube, to the YouTube example. So in my part two, we actually solved it and we got our U3X, which is the displacement on the third node in the X direction at 0 0.0035 meters. So what is that? 3.5 millimeters. Oh, look at that. 3.4451 millimeters. So we're a little bit more either accurate or non-accurate on whichever one. Who knows? Could have been a rounding error, but still that's pretty good. And then on the third node, U for displacement, three for third node in the y direction, we had a displacement of negative 0 0.00132 meters or negative 1.32 millimeters. And that is exactly what we got here. So you can see that this is a really powerful tool. I mean, we've done this example in, I don't know, six or seven minutes or whatever. And then this whole thing, it took me two videos of 14. It took almost like half an hour, but I mean, in a test situation, you obviously have to know how to do this stuff, but now you can kind of see how powerful that the S-Ring software actually is. 